I was very torn. I knew that I have to see the Joker because it'll be Oscar contention. I knew we'd be talking about it on the show. But also, in Janesville, Wisconsin, they were showing Parasite. It's yeah. a new Korean movie that's oh, supposed to be amazing. I want to see that. I need to see that, too. I considered buying a ticket to Parasite and going to see Joker. I was going in the middle of the day. Oh, they didn't have that, assigned seating. That old trick. Yeah. I did that once when I was a kid. We wanted to see Spies Like Us. Mm. It was R-rated and we were underage. So we bought a ticket to a PG movie and then we just snuck in. Okay, you ready for unboxing? Sure. Are you ready for unboxing? I hope you are because we're about to unbox here on the Unboxing Show. We're going to open our mail. This is things that people send to us in our P.O. box. And we're going to thank our donors. People will go to Welcome to the Basement Show. Oh, no. Oh. Welcome to the Basement Show.com and contribute. Tell me about these people. Well, there's Ziggy, who says, Been watching your show since Nanook of the North, when I was only in eighth grade. Wow. Your commentary never ceases to amaze me. Keep up the good work. Christopher, Tito, Jonathan, Andrew, Corey, Paul, Danielle, Sarah, Maurizio, Vincent, Bridget, Eden, Jared, Austin, Reiner, Luke, Neil, Grace, Brandon, William, The Factory Boys, Scott, Wilson, Malcolm, Benjamin, Kevin, Ferris, and Alexander. Thank you. The rest of our donors later in the show. Last time I went to collect the mail, the guy behind the counter at the post office, he sh said to the room, 2702 in the house. Did he really? Yeah. That's our P.O. box number. This Cardiff postcard is from Niall, who says, You inspired me to watch 100 films every year, and since 2015, I've got over 700. Keep up the good work from an Irishman living in Wales. Ah. Oh, thank you. Have some rare bit on us. Oh, Patricia Potter, Lightning, mm. from Danielle, who says, I just finished a rewatch of Welcome to the Basement and Unboxing and made sure to smash all those likey boys. Good. Oh, that phrase courtesy of Aaron Yonda. Oh, okay. I hope I get to continue supporting you and your work for years to come. P.S. Thanks for the awkward selfie at Gen Con. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. I like this postcard. It's an old romance novel with Fabio as the model and a cat. Grace sends this Mystery Science Theater Santa Claus postcard. Hey. Tis the season. Hope this gets here by Christmas. Good tidings to everyone. Was wondering if you've seen the HBO series Chernobyl from earlier this year. Oh, God. I watched the first episode. That's as far as I could get. I have not watched it yet. I want to. I love Jared Harris, and I love nuclear disasters. Jason Tucker Esquire, The Lawyer. There's a postcard from him. Happy Halloween, Feliz Dia de los Muertos, and Joyous Diwali. Speaking of Diwali, are there any Indian slash Bollywood movies you're particularly fond of? I no. need to watch more. No, I'm sorry. It is the most massive gap in both of our theater watching experiences. We have, we have seen Andy. We have seen Andy, but I <laughs> have you seen any other Bollywood movie? No. Sean Henry says, Short Seattle Sojourn with a side trip to... Bremerton, Washington. Seattle's main branch library is a personal favorite and well worth repeated pilgrimages. Yes, it is. Oh, I need that. I need, I need that Tona sent it back. I, oh, this is how Lorenzo feels all the time. Oh. Lore you threw it farther away from me. I'm not allowed to stand up because then I go out of focus. Thanks, Tona. You're welcome. This is one of the most amazing buildings I've ever seen in my entire life. It's by Rem Coolhouse. You look at the building and you think, am I going to need to go through the fourth or possibly fifth dimension to enter this building? Books look weird in this building. You guys sent us questions. Marcus Brisman writes, why do you think movies became your thing? The thing that really kick-started it was our eventual getting cable and then the VCR, getting oh, that. Yeah. And when we got the VCR, we got a very thick book which was like a video review guide, and it was just something that the... I don't know who put it together. I don't know who the critics were, but I just went through it, and I memorized all the titles in it. How many stars things got. Things I never saw before. Man from Snowy River. Three stars. Oh, I know. Yeah, cable and VCRs were huge. Yes. Toy Freaks writes, Is Matt more of a headphones and lava lamp sort of guy when it comes to listening to the LPs, or does he put them on while doing man stuff around the house? I do not... Listen to headphones. I like to hear the music in the room. And I just think sitting with headphones plugged in listening to a record is weird. The sound down here in the basement when he does have the stereo on does sound amazing. I do like to do stuff around the basement while I'm listening to records. My favorite thing is to clean up the boxes and packaging material after a unboxing session. But I have gotten to the point where I do I will just sit and listen to a record. 
Although I still do like to move around occasionally, which means no headphones. I've always wanted a lava lamp. I have never desired a lava lamp. I imagine if I had a dark room in my house, it would be cool to watch it do its thing. Yeah. I'm also not a headphones person. The thing when I wasn't really into my audiophile days that I found weird was that I never had a decent way of listening to music. I had seven or 800 CDs, still do, they're mostly in the basement, and I had just a rinky-dink boombox that I'd listen to them on. Yeah, me too. We have some fan art today from Topher Ray. He offers us this little thing. Welcome to the beach party. I've always felt that Craig was Frankie to my Dolores. <laughs> With the emotional manipulation. Mm-hmm. I'm just trying to make Matt jealous. God bless us, everybody. I can't wait to see Ebenezer Scrooge go swimming in his giant vault of money. It's always my favorite part of the story. Edward Woodward, a good word, actor word. The guy on the right is rocking that euphonium. <laughs> Dear Diary, today I got in seven mutterings, 12 grumblings, and 14 humbugs. A personal best. That's Daniel Costas. He was killed by that horse eventually. Right in the face. Kick. The big one there, that's David... Tyler. He was killed by the same horse. <laughs> Everyone here killed by horses, except for me. Oh. Until tonight, all of you. Fancy. It's so fancy. From L.A. to Tokyo. I almost went after her. Almost carries no weight. Except in horseshoes and hand grenades. <laughs> Where are we now? We're going to get some gelato. Oh, Fred, I do love you. Oh, and not just for this. I know. I love you for how you freak me nasty. My mother, God rest her saintly soul, was very fond of him. Fan loved me and I her. She was my biggest fan. <laughs> Belinda, help me with the goose. Uh, uh, this goose is excitable today. <laughs> Yes, it makes my mouth water. That and my overactive salivary glands. Everything makes my mouth water because I am have a di disorder. No one makes a better pudding than you, Mother. Except for Dorothy Pudding, the inventor of pudding. She makes the best pudding. Mr. Scrooge. Mr. Scrooge. Mr. Scrooge. Mr. Scrooge. Nope. Let's open a couple packages. Yes, let's do that. I'll take the wide one. All right, I'll take the deep one. This is from Eric in Denton, Texas. This is from Stephen in West Chester, Pennsylvania. Got a little cartoon on the back there. Oh. There we go. Take a look at that. It says, hey, fellows, keep up the great work. Thank you. There's an assortment of things in here. There's a Cards Against Humanity card. We have an ALF trading card. Back when he was on the football team, it looks like. <laughs> a record and a CD and what looks like a book from someone called Fishboy or possibly the Art Guards. I'm not sure what the name of the band is and what the name of the album is. Fishboy, Art Guards. The artwork on this looks like the artwork on that thing, so I'm thinking that this is Eric's band. Yeah. Fish Boy! Dear Matt Craig and Tona, Welcome to the Basement has gotten me through two breakups and many, many Friday nights. During my dinner breaks at work, I like to escape the humdrum of work with an episode of Welcome to the Basement or Unboxing. That's nice to know. I wanted to thank you all for the wonderful job you have done and continue to do on the show. Please accept these small gifts, one that I hope Matt likes, and one that I hope he finds funny. Watching you, watching movies since 2012. Steven Buttons! <laughs> it's becoming a thing. And he gave us some Mad Libs. Matt, if it is funny and easy to clean up and you feel the urge, take this and smash it against the wall. It feels too heavy. <laughs> it's a framed schematic of the type of corkscrew that I hate. <laughs> I've talked about this many times on this channel. And, wow, that's something else. You send us records. Matt listens to them, but not with headphones on. He's going to talk to you about some of these records right now. Sometimes I get Fishboy records, and sometimes I get other records. And I'm going to talk about some records of the other variety right now. The theme today is comedy. Hey! 
First of all, we have LBJ in the Catskills. I was hoping for some nice political comedy here, and there's really none to be found. This is a series of rather unfunny blackout sketches featuring LBJ and his Rube family mingling with the Jews. The sketches are very short. They have paper-thin comedy premises. And the guy doing LBJ's... He sounds like he's about to fall asleep. I'm, I'm Lyndon Johnson, and I'm here to... This is not comedy for the ages. <laughs> Here's an example of a joke you'll find on this record. Hello? This is Robert McNamara. I'm, l I'm looking for President Johnson. Who? Lyndon. Is Lyndon there? Lindman? I'll get him. And that's why we went to Vietnam. Didn't love this one, but uh, it's a great cover. And I never knew this thing existed. Nope. Next up we have I'm Sorry, I'll Read That Again. Featuring John Cleese of Monty Python and several other people not of Monty Python. This is really funny. I had low expectations of it. I know Therese from Australia sent this and said it hasn't really aged well. It's aged fine. Anyone who is a Monty Python enthusiast, this is a must listen because this has lots of Monty Python stuff on it. In particular, Dear sir, I wish to complain about the previous sketch. That bit is all oh, over okay. this. And when you have really solid comedy premises and you have a group of people who's obviously having a great time, it's never going to age. It's always going to seem like fun. And this really does. And lastly, we have Improvisations to Music with Mike Nichols and Elaine May. Um, Not a flattering picture of either of them, really. That one looks pretty good. Richard Burton said that Elaine May was, was the sexiest woman in the world. Not in that photo. <laughs> when I saw this, I thought that they were doing songs, which would be really a lot of fun to hear. That's not the case. They're taking pieces of music and improvising a scene around them, using the mood of the piece to inform the characters in the situation. It's a pleasure to hear these guys do improv, especially if you're an improviser, because they're so precise and they're so specific. Students of improv should really listen to this. I've never listened to Nichols and Knife. It's good, it's good stuff. I've seen like one or two of their sketches. I just always assume that it ends with him going, Mother. <laughs> Craig will now tell us about the rest of our donors. I will. Michael, Dan, David, Christine, Mara, Stephanie, Marie, Mario, Jennifer, Eric, Ashton, and Zach, James, Nathan, Mora, Andrea, Philip, Melanie, John, Grant, Abigail, Cole, Adam, Emily, Mitchell, Ralph, Mike, Shannon, Kempson, Gail, Alfred, Bernard, Brian Kelly Illustrations, Shelby, and RPC Services, bringing you all the services you need for your RPC. Thank you. All right, let's open those two other packages. This is from Christopher, who says, Cheers once again, movie mates. May the holiday season be merry, bright, and may... Welcome to the basement. Continue happily on. Thanks for being you. And he sends a poetry collection by Christopher G. Hicks himself, you might say. Amygdala. Part of the brain. It is, you're right. Some more long, tall poetry from Christopher G. Hicks. And this is from T.A. Epley, Thomas Alpha Fan Epley. Hoping you're not burned out on the pretty delicious toothpaste. <laughs> because there's more pretty delicious toothpaste. <laughs> Are you looking for a delicious toothpaste that's also pretty delicious? Uh, try Marvis. Here we have one of the finest pieces of American literature. Ambrose Bierce's The Unabridged Devil's Dictionary. Oh, yeah. Do you have this one? I know, I've heard of it. Ambrose Bierce was a 19th century author, veteran of Shiloh, who eventually wandered into Mexico and was never seen again. Did he write The Incident at Owl Creek Bridge? He did write that, yes. This is basically a dictionary that he wrote, which is very, very cynical. Swiftian, you might say. Swiftian, yes. Gout, a physician's name for the rheumatism of a rich patient. 19th century humor there. Grammar, a system of pitfalls thoughtfully prepared for the rest of the self-made man, along the path by which he advances to distinction. Finally, there seems to be an album of the record variety. It is... Oh, I know that. Oh, I don't know that. Pear Ubu. I know Pear Ubu, but that I thought that was a different record than it actually was. It's Pear Ubu. I thought it was the Mekon Sphere and Whiskey. This is a band that I never got into. It's in the same neighborhood of all of these 80s bands that I really like. Uh, Pre-alternative, alternative rock. And this is just the one that got away from me. Yeah, I got a Pear Ubu album or two. And now I've got this one, Dub Housing. 
We've been doing this show for eight years, and so there are a lot of episodes that we have shot. So many movies we've watched. It's possible you may have missed one or forgotten about it and need to watch it again. Right now, Craig is going to recommend an episode from our back catalog. It's Christmas time, so why don't you check out one of the most famous Christmas movies ever made. Miracle on 54th Street. 34th Street. But not 44th Street. That's a dangerous part of town. A Christmas classic given the basement treatment. Check it out. You get to see young Natalie Wood and old... Edmund Gwynn. Edmund Gwynn. There's a button at the end of this video you can click to watch our Miracle on 34th Street episode, but why stop there? You can also click the button that is our Christmas playlist and watch all of our Christmas episodes that we've done over the years. Some of them aren't even about Christmas. And right now, you can also watch this. And he remembered that I have a sudden coming of working age, and he told me that he had a position open starting at three shillings and sixpence every week. Three shillings and sixpence? I'll be able to buy my own house and have sixpence left over. <laughs> <laughs>